will start things off with one of the best pound-for-pound pound fighters. I think it's fair to say a future Hall of Famer in Terrence Crawford. He's right on that track, right on the cusp. Crawford in action for the first time in 2022. Where you been, Bud Crawford? Well, he's been waiting for an opportunity to fight Errol Spence. That didn't happen. So now he takes a title defense in his home of Omaha, Nebraska, uh, in the downtown arena there that seats about 17,000. He is fighting a Russian who has now lived in England, David Avanesian. Um, and Avanesian comes in as a heavy underdog, as we see. We've got an over-under of seven and a half rounds. I think most look at this as Crawford, who's heavily favored, winning easily. Dan, give me some thoughts. And uh, what what might drag this into later rounds? And, and what kind of chance does Avanesian have to be competitive against one of the best fighters? Or does he have a chance? Well, I think, uh, first of all, Crawford, like you said, I mean, there's a lot of people that think he's number one pound for pound. Certainly, he's like in the top three at worst. Uh, you know, he hasn't fought since the end of last year when he had what I consider, I guess, one of his signature victories of his career. Well, the first time he got a chance to fight a really top name welterweight when he looked excellent and stopped uh, uh, his buddy, Sean Porter, in the 10th round in Las Vegas. So after that, his contract with top rank expired. And everybody thought, OK, now that the promotional entities are not conflicting, it'll be easy to make the, the, the big fight against Errol Spence, which would be for the undisputed title. Terrence Crawford has the WBO belt and Errol Spence has the other three. They had a long uh, negotiation between Terrence Crawford and his team and uh, Al Heyman from PBC. And, you know, in the end, uh, they had their, their, their heels dug in on certain aspects of it. They could not reach an agreement. Very disappointing for boxing fans. So he uh, understandably didn't want to not fight for the entire year. So he ended up making this fight with David Evanesian with a, with a different promoter. And that fight is what will take place in his hometown of Omaha, Nebraska, where he's a very big draw. Uh, takes place on Saturday as a, the main event of a pay-per-view. Um, and as far as Avanesian, I mean, they didn't get like the top welterweight or, or the second welterweight. But I think if you do an honest rating of welterweights, um, in my personal ratings, I don't have Evanesian in the top 10. But Pete, quite honest, he'd probably be like 11th. Um, he's like that level, like the lower part of the top 10 to like the top dozen. You know, he's a competent guy. He's been in with some good fighters. Um, maybe he's best known for having sent uh, the Hall of Famer Shane Mosley into retirement when he outpointed him in an upset in uh, 2017, I want to say. Since then, uh, he, he has a loss to uh, the mean machine, Edges Kavalowskis, a fighter who was an Olympian who Terrence Crawford knocked out in a title defense. But Avanesian has also uh, won fights twice against Kermit LaRahaga, once against Josh Kelly. They were both undefeated, considered you know rising contenders. He's on a, a knockout streak of six wins in a row and knocked out all of those opponents. And so he, you know, I don't know if I can sit here and be honest and say he's a live dog, but he's a very competent, solid professional, only been knocked out once. And you talk about can it go deeper into the fight. He seems to have a good chin because only knocked out against Kavalowskis, who's a good puncher, who dropped Terrence Crawford, even though the referee missed it. Uh, and Terrence Crawford, you know, will be the first to admit probably that he is a relatively slow starter in his fights. You know, he likes to, to feel things out, see what he's got in front of him uh, and, uh, you know, find his rhythm and all that. And so it usually takes him a few rounds to get going. I think he wants to put on a nice show for the hometown crowd. So I, I, I think David will uh, will last, you know, a little bit in this fight. You know, he's like I said, he's a pretty good fighter. He was the European champion. And the other thing about this, TJ, is this was a fight that kind of came out of nowhere for him, but he was already training because he was supposed to have a European title defense that would have taken place, um, I guess, last week, and so he, or maybe next week, whatever it was. But the point was, this was not something that that he was had to just rush into camp and right, get ready. Right. He'd been training to be prepared for a fight at this time of the year. So all that being said, uh, it's impossible for me to pick against uh, Terrence Crawford in this spot, but maybe Avanesian can uh, hang in there for a while in my mind. Shout out to the boxing writer who's weighing in, and he's saying, hey, being a year out when you're in your mid-30s, like what Crawford has been, is never a good thing. And maybe it will be a bit of a slow start uh, here for Terrence Crawford. But I think we might have a little agreement here on what's going to happen. What first? Go ahead. You got dibs. What do you believe happens here first? And I'm going to join in as well. Let's go on the record. Uh, I've got Crawford by a knockout. He's He's been knocking everybody out. He's, uh, I think, an underrated puncher. Uh, I know he wants to put on a good show for his hometown crowd. Uh, so while I think he may start a little bit slowly, he'll finish with a flourish and get the big KO. All right. So we agree on that. We both are going to lay the 750. Man, look at that. What yeah. you have to lay because the belief from the Bet US line is that Crawford is going to get the knockout. He's minus 2,000 to win the fights. So there's no value on the money line. Now, this is interesting. The over under seven and a half, as we saw. What do you think about that? 
That was a that was an interesting number. I'll say they 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 know what they're doing when they set those lines. I took the under, not with massive confidence, but I feel like uh, in the end, Terrence Crawford uh, knows how to finish. Uh, he has plenty of knockouts in, in in that portion of the fight over the years. Mm-hmm. Um, I when I saw the pictures of the guys at their uh, press conference and when they met head to head this week, I was kind of surprised how much bigger Crawford was in that scene because remember Crawford has come up from the lightweight division. Uh, years and spent time at the junior welterweight division. He's now, of course, been the last several years in the welterweight division, but it's not like his height changed. He's just a much bigger guy than uh, Evan Essien. I feel like that might be an advantage. The other thing about Crawford, he's very adept at switching right-handed to left-handed. He typically comes out starting as a right-handed fighter. He'll switch on the drop of a dime to left-handed, which is where he really kind of feels more comfortable. That may be a problem for Evan Essien. He'll see punches coming from all angles. And uh, again, Evan Essien was stopped the one time by uh, Kavalowskis, uh you know, and I just think in the end, Crawford, uh, the, the class will, will win out. And uh, again, Evan Essien's a solid opponent, but not at the level of Terrence Crawford. So I think it, it's going to wind up being a stoppage. Last distance fight for Terrence Crawford against Victor Postal in July yeah. of 2016, right? So yeah. uh, my, my bad, Jose Benavides. No, Jose Benavides was stopped in the 12th round. It got to the 12th yes. round. I was Last... asked, by the way, the Jose Benavides fight, we... I remember the, the thing was, is he going to be able to stop him? I was there at that fight, which took place in the same arena in Nebraska that will mm-hmm. host the fight on Saturday. And uh, that was the fight where Benavides and uh, him almost got into a big rumble at the weigh-in. Crawford threw a punch, missed because of it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in the end, he beat him down bad in that fight and it, it, uh, administered massive punishment and then stopped him in the final round. Interesting in the last five fights, 12th round stoppage, 6th Crawford, 6th round stoppage, ninth, 4th round stoppage, and then the Sean Crawford, uh, the Sean Porter Crawford fight was a 10th round stoppage. So in three of the last five that he's won by stoppage, they've all been after, let's say, the 8th round. But you and I agree, we think it's under here. He'll get to him. He may get to him 5th round, 6th round. That still counts. For the under, so we're both going to lay the one twenty. Hey, it counts if it's in the seventh round, as long as it's before halfway. But, but before halfway, I agree. We both like Terrence Crawford, and again, that's a pay-per-view main event, probably somewhere around eleven Eastern time. I'm going to be screwed up this weekend. I'm going to be in California with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I got to calculate for Pacific time and try to figure this out around dinner. But uh, Crawford. Again, in Omaha, Nebraska, defending his title. He's back. He's very entertaining. We'll see what happens in that one. Again, we'll get to your questions and your comments. Some of you are already firing away in the live chat. More live audience is finding us. Thank you for doing so. Hit the like button. Hit the bell. Make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're sharing it out. We're here Fridays, 1 Eastern time. Whenever there's big time boxing action, we're obviously talking about it, making some picks and making you some money as well here on the Bet U.S. Boxing Show. 